I don't see the. Uh... There we go. It's Tuesday, September 7th, 2016. It's time for Worth Point Chats with Harry Rinker. I'm Greg Watkins, the editor at worthpoint.com. And uh, how are we doing today, Harry? Well, actually, it's Wednesday, not Tuesday. It is, you're right, it's Wednesday. I've, it's Wednesday, yes. You know, we're, we keep <laughs> we could switching these times around a little bit because we did the one last week on Thursday. But here's the name of the game. Whenever possible, from here on out, for at least through the rest of the year, we're going to try to do Wednesdays at 9 o'clock in the evening. Now, the truth of the matter is there may be a couple of weeks from a conflict on my schedule. For example, the last Wednesday of this month, I have tickets for the Detroit Tigers Cleveland Indians game, which is at seven o'clock at night, and I am not doing this show from Tiger Stadium. And, and why would expect and you? No, no, no. that game may well be involved in the playoffs. I hate to tell you this, but I am not skipping the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you do this. You have to pay attention. We'll, you have to pay we'll attention do that on again. a different day that week. But on the whole, we're going to try to do it on Wednesday night That's at right. nine o'clock. But, you know, life has been kind of fun. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned to you, but the other week when I was over doing a uh, appraisal clinic for the Michigan Historical Society uh, at, at uh, the gallery in Lansing, which is a uh, semi-consignment uh, estate sale shop owned by my friend Barbara Jersey, he had from an estate a huge collection of uh, glass dinnerware from the uh, uh, 30s of, in the Fastoria Navarre pattern. And while I would normally never, ever buy a table load of glassware, you know, there are just some moments when you say, would you like to make your wife happy? And that would make my wife happy, and so I bought it. Well, we unpacked it this week and then cleaned it up. And, you know, the fun thing about it is to go up on the Internet and see what people are asking for that stuff. Uh, you know, first of all, we got a replacements limited. Well, you know, there's nothing real about the replacement limited prices for things. Replacement limits works on one very simple premise. If you broke it and it was your wife's family service, you will That's pay right. anything, anything at all to replace it to maintain harmony in the family. It's, I mean, hey, come on. It's, it's been a good selling philosophy for them over the years. However, the shocker for me, which I thought was interesting, was the fact that I did go check up on the Internet for some of the pieces we didn't have or we didn't acquire. So strangely enough, Bought this whole table load of stuff, three different stemware uh, size pieces, and yet I, we didn't get a creamer and sugar as part of it, the, the deal. So, but I, I did discover that if you buy glass on the net, these people charge exorbitant shipping prices for a piece of glass, anywhere from eight, six to 12 bucks to ship glass. Now, I understand that glass is fragile and you got to pack it carefully and all the rest of that type of stuff, but. I had another another instance too on the net recently where I where there was something offered for twenty one bucks or best offer, right? Yes. So I made a best offer of fourteen bucks, figuring shit, the guy should be happy for anything. And it came back rejected. Boom. I wait a minute. I said, How could he it, right away? I mean, how could he reject my offer? He wasn't on the at the same time I was, so I thought, okay, obviously I'll, I'll raise it to fifteen bucks, right? Yes. Boom. Again, came back. I don't know if eBay's allows them to set rejection offers or not for best offer. What's it the does. best offer for him? Damn it, twenty dollars and ninety nine cents. I mean, really? It doesn't, it doesn't allow you to set uh, uh, minimum uh, rejections for best offers. Well, so, the thing, the thing so about his range it, might be between twenty one and nineteen. <laughs> yeah, but the thing, yeah, right. Good for him, not for me. But the other right. thing, the other thing was that one of the one of the reasons my offer was where it was, was I thought his shipping price was exorbitant. I, I mean, you know, there is this whole problem up on eBay of people trying, literally, and I mean seriously, uh, uh, trying to uh, go up on the net and cover their costs in the shipping. Yes. I mean, you, you find it on Amazon.com. The book is a buck, and the shipping is three ninety nine. Okay, fine. The book costs five bucks. Now, I don't know why they don't pay up five bucks for shipping. And, you know, three ninety nine seems to be the stock price for books up, up on Amazon, so it's okay. But, you know, it's just, it, just, it just drives me nuts. I, I, I think people think they're entitled to their time to pack it, to pack it up and, and take it to the post office. The truth of the matter, that's one of the costs of doing business. And I, ref, I refuse to get involved. I, I won't pay it. I, I simply 
will not pay it. Well, I do know that eBay yeah. sellers who are trying to do this for a living. Um, oh, boo hoo to them. Well, that that's the thing. They they have their their what it what they think they need to get out of the item to make make a decent profit. Yeah, but the thing is, so, it should be it should be in the cost. Come on, Jeff. The name of the, the name of the game is that there there are no guidelines on eBay. They're all little Hitlers out there. Those people selling that stuff. Selling that, stuff. that well, yes, yes. It, 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 I don't know how eBay can manage with uh, with all the. Uh, personalities of the personalities. Sellers. What kind of personalities are you talking about? Are you suggesting I am a personality problem out there? <laughs> no, no, no. The sellers, no, not no, the buyers. No, no, no. Did I ever tell you what my eBay handle is? The finger. No. The finger. <laughs> That's good. Yes, it is. It's good. Back no, when no. I was a heavy eBay bidder, I was always delayed to have my opponents found out that they lost to somebody with that title. With the finger. The finger outbid me. Damn it. Well, it's better than the bird. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing about eBay, they don't have any moral control over the handles people use. I did not know that. I didn't. Uh, well, I, didn't well, know I don't know that either, but I would have thought they'd have taken my account by now for one reason or another. <laughs> well, anyway, enough of all this the silliness. Are we going to are we gonna do any serious business tonight, or are we just going to have fun? You know, we could have a fun session one of these we, times. We could just have fun, but let's let's get some business out of the way here. All right, what, what business would you like to get out of the way first? We, I would like to uh, let people know how they could uh, send us ideas for us to talk about. Yes, yeah, so we don't wind up picking the ideas ourselves because they just had a good illustration of what happens when we do that, actually. That's but right. anyway, look, the whole purpose of Worth Point Chats with Harry Rinker is to find out what you would like me to talk about or, or, or Greg, Greg and I to talk about. And there's, here's how you do it. Send your thoughts or comments or subjects you'd like us to talk about to community at worthpoint.com. That's community at worthpoint.com. Also, if you have an object you're curious about, you can send uh, an email there as well. Just be as descriptive as possible. Pictures are the biggest of all. In fact, we're going to insist that you send pictures because this is, this, is, this is a visual media we're involved in right now. And again, just send them to community at worthpoint.com and we'll get them in the files and we'll get to them. Actually, speaking of pictures, I want to start today. I got an interesting email in uh, from uh, a fellow up in New Hampshire. He bought a basket. Okay. And, 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 and he, he, he sent me, he sent me a, a bunch of great pictures about the basket, actually. Uh, and he said, well, I paid 30 bucks for it. And, and, oh, and by the way, he, he described it as a laundry basket, so we're not talking small here, right? Right. And and he, he sent me a number of pictures about it, and he said, oh, by the way, Harry, the dealer told me it was Shaker. And he said, is that a possibility? And I took one look at the pictures, and I said, no. Now, the, the question becomes, how do I know it's not a Shaker basket? Well, Okay, let's just take the, the two easiest way. Look at how the ash splats are interwoven. And B, look at the center handle. Neither of those characters, neither that splat weave, uh, the ash split weave, or that handle is typical. Claker, uh, a shaker laundry baskets had, had U-shaped handles uh, on the end, not, not like this. Furthermore, the bottom was treated very differently. Here you could see from this basket that the uh, weave is very open, like water could fall through it. In the shaker basket, the weave would be extremely tight, almost as though it could hold water, except that the shaker baskets had had a had a uh, like like a uh, yeah. What am I trying to think of? Like a cane seat bottom in, in, in them. The other thing about this basket too is it didn't have any kind of wear, the kind of wear that you would expect now. You've had my authenticating course, uh, Greg, and you know the old theory in the courses, if it looks new, assume it is new, and this one smells new. First of all, you'll notice here that the difference in the tone between the up, uh, upright supports and, the, and uh, well, the vertical and the horizontal supports. Normally, if you have an old basket that's aged out, what you can do is take your finger on those horizontal supports and slip them up upwards, and you'll see a, a different tone underneath than on the vertical ones. The fact that these are 
told the same, uh, the vertical ones are different, differently than the other ones, make me very suspicious that this is a fairly modern basket. Also, when you look at the nails that, that, are, that are in the top, there's no rust or anything around the nails. And notice, notice that somebody can conveniently put a number three there. Now look, dealers in New England are not dumb. They know a shaker basket when they see one. And, you know, shaker baskets are a couple hundred bucks, laundry baskets are a couple hundred bucks and up. Now, what made, what made this interesting was that this fellow lived near three shaker communities, two of them in New Hampshire and, and, and one over in, in Maine. So he thought, well, maybe, maybe this dealer is, is there. Look, we sell dreams and stories in this business, and this dealer was just making up a pile of crap for this guy. But anyway, you know, one of the values, the worth point, of course, is his Worthopedia. And be, prior to the show, uh, we, we took an opportunity to look at a few uh, of uh, the baskets, the shaker baskets that are on on uh, the Worthopedia site. And I asked uh, Greg to put aside a couple of them. Greg, let's take a look at the first one that we're right. to take a look at here. Well, the first thing that we'll see is when you search for shaker laundry baskets, you'll get uh, laundry basket salt and pepper shakers. Yes, you will. Uh, as well. So, well, we're not, we're not <laughs> interested in those, Greg. I hate to that's think. Right. So uh, here's one that's listed as an antique shaker work basket. But now look, see how, but here, here's a good thing. Here you can see how, how tight the weave is, right? And yes. see how that handle is, well, is put down into the weave and held in there? That yes. is extremely typical of a shaker basket uh, or laundry basket or work basket or whatever kind of basket, including that wrapping around with the upper hoop. So that's, that's what we were looking for in the other one that we didn't find. Now, this one, I think, what sold for what, what was 100 and some odd bucks? Uh, let me close it up. Uh, $189. Right, which is a far cry from 30 bucks, right? Yes. And right. so, go ahead. So we then we had a then we looked at another one. Here is a uh, a large Jonathan Klein primitive shaker style basket. Now one of the things that's going on, of course, today is that we have a lot of reproduction craftsmen out there making things just like they made them historically. And here is an example of somebody. The, the interesting thing about this is oftentimes these modern day reproductions cost more than the antique examples. But here you can see if you look at the detailed shots. First of all, that wonderful detailed shot of how the handles apply, but then look at that wonderful little like like cane weave on the bottom of the basket for the shakers. That's what you would expect to find. Now, of course, the basket style is different from shaker colony to shaker colony, and I think we found, did we find a laundry basket type from one of the Kentucky shaker places, right? Yes. There you go, right there. And that, But that sold for 180 bucks, and that's typical of, of some of the other uh, shaker uh, communities. But here's the name of the game. The word style, as you know from the authenticating course that, that you took at the Institute for the Study of Antiques and Collectibles, the word style is an indicator that it's a later copy or a reproduction. So the minute somebody says shaker style or whatever, man, the alarm bells go off and say, man, I'm not getting a period, a period piece. Now, another thing in the authenticating course one of the things that was there is that beware of bargains. If it's a bargain, your hackles ought to go up and you ought to be extremely suspicious. And so, you know, this guy, what did he buy? Well, he bought, a, I think, a fairly modern basket, maybe a reproduction, not even a reproduction, but just a basket of, of, of its type. Uh, may have some age to it, not a lot. And 30 bucks isn't bad. I went up on the net and found a bunch of new for 30 bucks. So, I mean, he, he didn't overpay. But, but you know, if... if if you don't buy with a questioning mindset, you, you, you know, when a dealer says something to me, you know what the first words out of my mouth are? Prove it. Prove to me without it, without a shadow of a doubt that what you're telling me is true. And if he would have forced this dealer to, to, to quote, unquote, prove it, the dealer would have backed off and told him he was, didn't know what he was talking about. But okay, but 30 bucks isn't bad for that. that I mean, that's 80 bucks would be terrible, but 30 bucks is not bad. For a basket that size, that, that no, would be no, I think so too. Uh, you, you know, uh, it, it, it's one of those things where we, we so much want to believe, buyers so much want to believe the stories they're told, that we really do have to uh, be very cautious out there. 
But anyway, that's the tail of the shaker basket, which is uh, a shaker style basket in this case. Not even shaker style because you couldn't use the word style like that because I couldn't find any shaker baskets that looked remotely like that. And I mean, I spent some time up on the internet seeing if there and there were other shaker basket types, but none with that center handles type of stuff. So not unless somebody's living in the shaker colonies days and producing stuff that's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, could be, could be. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, last week, last week we were talking about um, shaving mugs. Remember that we had that uh, very interesting shaving mug with the good luck banner around right. the top, which was with fun, I think. That was a, a yeah. fun thing. And then, so now you've decided that you want me to talk more about shaving mugs. Well, I just thought it would be interesting that you mentioned in passing that the value is in uh, shaving mugs that show the the person's um, occupation. Yes, that's right. The, the shaving mugs break down into a number of collecting types. One is what they call occupational mugs. And there, the deal was that you went into the barber, and if you got a mug, you had your name put on it, and it had your occupation. If you were a butcher or a carpenter or a railroad guy or whatever, there would be a design on there. Now, the truth of the matter is that the barber ordered those mugs. At, they, they were stock mugs that came from decorating companies. Uh, the white blanks did come from Europe. In most cases, now, there weren't a lot of white blanks made in the U.S. for shaving mugs. But they did They did go to American decorating firms. They didn't come uh, – They you didn't take the guy's name and – and write to some guy in Germany and say, hey, I need a railroad mug on there. Because interestingly enough, the occupation images on the mugs are American focused. I mean, you know, if you got a railroad mug, it's going to look like an American train. It's not going to look like a European one or anything like that. So they would order them up and they would be put in the barbershop. And, and they are very, very collectible. And, and they were always the kind of king of the hill mugs. All right, now, there was another subcategory of uh, shaving mugs that were very collected. Uh, for a while, and those were uh, fraternal mugs. You know, if you didn't have an occupation, you got a mug uh, made up uh, with your uh, fraternity, uh, fraternal group on it, whether it was Masons or Independent Order or Red Men or the Orioles or whatever. And they were highly collected for a while. That market is, has kind of gone by, by the wayside. Then you simply got mugs with people's names on them and a floral scene. Those are kind of dregs. And, and unless you Unless it's your family, that kind of mug has little to no. I mean, you can buy them for twenty-five to forty-five bucks. Good period ones uh, these days. Now, the one that we saw last week, interestingly enough, was decorated by a China painter, uh, a woman from the China Painting School, uh, Dixie C, I believe her name was, and 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 so she got some blanks and and, and they did that that way. You know, it's funny about about collecting. I I I've long talked about and I've written about and I will continue to write about what I call endangered collecting categories, categories where the people who collect them have gotten seriously older and older and older and older. And unfortunately, shaving mugs is, is one of those categories where there are no young collectors for them. Anymore. Nobody remembers using them. I mean, you know, one of the fun things were in the old toilet sets that they used to have shaving mugs, you know, in the where you had the chamber, you know, the wash pitcher and bowl. And the big pitcher was the cold water pitcher, and the small one was the hot water pitcher. And there was a chamber pot, a lid, and a slop pot with a lid, and the soap dish, and the comb dish, and all the rest of that type of stuff. And there was often a, a shaving mug. There was also a shaving shuttle. That was the one where where you you have the brush on one side and the soap on the inside. You know, remember? Do you remember? Yes. You ever seen those? You know, right. and some of them could be very colorful, and some of them were done by some of the better European, like RS, the RS, RS Sewell, RS Tillowitz, RS Prussia, that. But even they have fallen on hard times. I, I remember back when I first started writing the uh, Warm and Price guys, straight razor collectors were hot. And there was a guy named Rob Doyle up out of, out of New York State. He was an auctioneer, and he wrote the, the main books on straight razor collecting. And, man, he had he had a heck of a collection. This was back in the late 80s, 90s. By the time you got to 2000, man, who cared? I mean, straight razors that were selling for hundreds of dollars by then were selling for less than nothing. Now, I'm sure there must be a couple of straight razors. The neatest uh, straight razor, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. Well, I, I bet you have them. We should, we should check worth point to see what you have with this. Do you ever hear about a seven-day razor set where you had a different razor for each day of the week? 
No, but I can look for it. No, no, let's, let's, well, let's, let's take a look and see what we can find on that, because it's a fun thing to share with that. There were actually razor sets where there were seven razors in the set, and um, what happened was that they would have uh, Monday, they, so they would actually, some of them would actually say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, they came in a wide variety of panels and sometimes in wonderful case boxes. Those were, you know, during the peak of the razor uh, collecting craze were, were one of the uh, highlight things. The other, the other thing was that, uh, oh, there you go. Oh, all right, it looks like you've got some sets there, right? Right, so. Uh, yeah, well, let's go, to, let's go to the one on the, uh, yeah, seven days straight razor set. Look at that. But that's so what four and fifty one bucks went two thousand and thirteen. That's not a bad price. No, so, no. so you know they're still fairly strong. What do you have? Do you have another set on there too? Let's see what we can find here. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's uh, let's let's uh, take a look at that here. That, that these are. I always like to do this type of stuff. Take the uh, take the one on the on the left there. Uh, this one here. The, the the first one Wilkinson Sword Seven. A razor set, but I think that's a straight razor set, is it? It is sixty-four bucks. So it doesn't yeah. pay to have straight razors. Uh, we need we. I, I not doesn't pay to have blade razors. We need straight razors here. Yeah. What else? So, you, so do you have another straight razor set on there in that pile somewhere? We do. Yeah. Let's keep going here. Well, this you, is got, you got more of the straight bladed sets. I didn't realize there were that many straight bladed sets around. All right, here's one. That looks like you're coming down to some. Try that. Try that next row. Oh, there you go. What is it? So this Seven is day razor set, five hundred and four bucks. So you know, if you get lucky enough to find one of those, that you're fine. The other, the other hot thing was a lot of the early razor blades had etched etchings on them. Battleships. Uh, there, you know, they the there were some from the Spanish American War with Dewey and 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 the various admirals on them and. And, and, and other scenes. Of course, some of the handles were fun. The, the handles had a wide variety of handle from ebony to, to, to you name it. And there were some celluloid handle ones. Of course, the best celluloid ones were the nude handle ones. Uh, and I'm sure they'll still sell because in, in, uh, try, uh, try a straight razor celluloid handle nude. All right. No, all right. Well, hey, this is, but, but look, but I mean, for, for somebody who who, do, who doesn't want to spend thousands of dollars a year keeping a reference library alive here for the price of a monthly subscription to WorthPoint, you actually have a very good set of price guides. And you have to be a little careful when the, when the, uh, make sure the auctions are current and that type of thing. Let's see what we come up here. Oh no, come on. What happened to all the nudies here? You, did you write nude in there? Oh, nude? nude. Yes. Yeah, come on. Who wants to look at ordinary cellulite handles? Get a life. Uh, zero. Did we didn't draw a blank here? Did we? Had nothing with the nudes. Oh no. Well, that was because all the good ones are off the marketplace. All right, what's this? But no, but just take one of the first ones right there. You're not looking at big bucks here for a lot of this stuff. Twenty-four fifty. That I mean, and that's a nice cellulite handle for twenty-four fifty. I mean, in terms of an affordable. Uh, collectible, uh, 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 collecting celluloid uh, razors, uh, handled razors is probably, uh, you know, very much in the pocketbooks of almost anybody, actually. Well, these uh, are the between, yeah, uh, most of the ones that you're, that you're showing here seem pretty pretty plain. Take the one on the right there and that one that you got there uh, uh, to, the, to the right at the top row there. Let's see what that one looks like. Yeah, $18.50. I mean, you know, it, I mean, it's a really affordable category, straight razors. Yep. All right, enough of all of this. Let me get, let me get that, that's, that's my whistle here. Yeah, well, the thing about it is that we, we also, we have a, a fun second object. I got to, you know, you got to love people that, 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 that take advantage of you, so to speak. So I got this email. We got this email in, right, about a frosty root beer sign. Right. So we're going to throw it up here. Here's the frosty root beer sign. About that? Sooner or later, it's coming. Yep, it's coming. Absolutely. What can we say about it? 
Well, here's frosty root beer. Here's the sign that, that we were asked about, right? Right. So, uh, first of all, frosty root beer was originally a Maryland root beer. Uh, and and uh, very popular in the East and eventually got bought out by Monarch Beverages up in Detroit. And it got promoted for a while until Monarch Beverages bought, um, bought Dad's root beer, which at the time was the second highest selling root beer next to uh, Hires. And so they kind of pulled back their advertising from Frosty. But so I thought, but I, but you know, I thought it was interesting. And there is a little Frosty elf with a bottle of Frosty. So I decided, oh, well, I'll check out eBay. Now, I know I should have checked out Worth Point first, but I thought I'd check out eBay and see what was up there. And guess what? what? They were selling this on eBay <laughs> with a starting price of 100 bucks. And so what do they want me to tell them? That I thought the 100 bucks was more than fair. Actually, it sold on eBay for 122 bucks, but it had some damage on the bottom. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, you know, it's always amazing when you can collect you could do all kinds of variety. And so going to Worth Point and the Worthopedia, uh, we found all kinds of wonderful variations of this chalkboard, right? Uh, yes. Well, well, first, of all, first of all, there was there was a, a lot of great frosty signs. Be careful, yeah, were, I mean, be careful about some of the modern repros, but I mean, yeah. but fr there, frosty had a lot of great stuff out there in terms of advertising, especially after yeah, yeah. it got up in Monarch. And, uh, well, the thermometers, the they, have, they have signs, they have die cut stuff. Uh, there was a whole whole lot of even some of the bottle labels were fun. But let's go let's go to the signs that you found because first of all, here's here's one that's made 146. Now the one on eBay eventually sold for 122.50. But here's one, and this this one is similar to the one that we were looking at. It's got damage on the bottom, but the other one was damaged on the bottom too. So. Right, so, right. you know, okay, so, you know, the price that the person paid was, and it only had two bidders, too, I might add. add. But but then we you, you went a little bit further, and there's some other fun ones. Now, here's one, clearly a little bit later, I would say, from from the looks of it, with the, with the yellow uh, uh, around the side. This one brought 175 back in 2013, and so that that's a pretty solid price on that one. But keep going here. Then you had this one, which I thought was interesting. Uh, I, I would date, you know, looking at the previous ones, I would date them earlier than this one, but this one is dated from the 50s, which makes sense to me. By the way, uh, it always, always is important to look up histories of companies because Frosty Group Year began in 1939. So if somebody says one of these signs date from the 20s or early 30s, that's a lie because the company was in existence. But anyway, here we got 183.50. 50, whatever it is, nine or something. Yeah, but then right, you right. found this really, the next one is, I love the next one. I, I Maybe I should have been a bidder, except not at $46.01, I could have been a bidder. Uh, but I, I love this, this one. Now, this one really speaks 60s. I mean, no, I mean, the fun thing is, when you, when you have an opportunity to look at signs like this, watch the graphics, because the graphics speak decades. And voila, man, this one is just super. Look how look how those graphics are. Go back to the one before. I mean, contrast the graphics. It's like night and day, isn't it? Between time periods. No, seriously. And this is why when you handle antiques and collective objects, it's extremely important. Really, it's extremely important to to pay attention to the to the object as a whole and all the different parts of the objects and topography. Uh, the lettering on objects is extremely important because topography changes over time. It really does. Okay. Well, anyway, we're nearing the end of this uh, session here. We'll uh, ask my usual questions. What's happening uh, with uh, WorkPoint these days? Are we still going to Mexico or is that contest over? WorkPoint is coming along. Uh, the, the Mexico sweepstakes trip still has a couple of days left to register. And to do that, you would go to the Worth Point Facebook page and look for the, uh, the Mexico sweepstakes and uh, click on that link. It'll take you to the registration page. Um, we will have a story uh, written by Will Cycle about his experience uh, at the Little France uh, flea market. That was the, uh, the prize for our first sweepstakes. Uh, that'll be in the newsletter when it comes out on the Friday. Yeah, by the way, the newsletters are coming out fairly punctual now, and I'm even getting mine. Yes, we figured out what the problem was with yours, so you are getting it. <laughs> no, but I, but 
Well, it's it's fun there because I noticed that uh, you've been ex- taking some of the excerpts from uh, these Worth Point chats and including in the newsletter as well. Uh, that's right. That's right. We, we do include uh, a link to the most recent chat with Harry uh, in, the, in each newsletter. So uh, if you don't watch it live, then you can watch it through the newsletter or on the Worth Point site or on YouTube. If you search for Worth Point chats with Harry, uh, it'll pop well, listen, let's uh, end by putting back up the slide where people can get in touch with us again. We would love to hear from you. What would you like us to talk about on these Worth Point Chats uh, with Harry Rinker? Send your ideas or your questions to community at worthpoint.com. That's community at worthpoint.com. If you have an object you'd like us to talk about, send that uh, same question here as well. Uh, you know, talk about the object, tell us how you acquired it, give us as much history as you can, size, pictures, 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 the object as a whole, the marks, any of the rest of that site, and we'll get to it, we'll let you know even when we're going to do it. Well, anyway, enough of that, we've done our job for this week, I'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right, Harry. At That's 9, week. remember, Wednesday, Wednesday not Tuesday. That's right. That's right. All right. Until next Wednesday, we'll say goodbye. Goodbye. Okay.